Doctor Who Series 10 Preview, What to Expect. At this point we are now less than a month away from the start of Series 10 of New Who and fandom is reacting with the usual amount of excitement, apprehension, fear, loathing and nightmares. Which old monsters from the classic series will be brought back and turned into a complete fucking joke this time? Which piece of beloved continuity will Stephen Moffat brain fart one of his own dumb fuck characters into? Which beloved character will change gender or race for no fucking reason whatsoever other than to appease the anti-white male PC Nazis this year? Oh the excitement. As I have previously said this increasing new who cynic, who did in fact stop watching at the end of series 8 but has since relented if for no other reason than to be able to do acidic reviews of this crap for shits and giggles, will be watching series 10. And, you know, it doesn't look terrible from the trailer problem is, of course, they're very good at making slick, exciting and terribly shiny trailers. They're less good at making actual episodes that are any good however, which is where the problems start. This year we have a new companion, Aspil. Actually we have two new companions, Aspil and Nardole. Aspil is a young woman from 21st century London, so a radical departure there as the new series really enters brave and completely uncharted new territory. Nardole is moderately more interesting, as he's an alien or something, but fandom has already decided they hate him as he's Matt Lucas and silly. Or something. Myself, I'm reserving judgment as I didn't see Husbands of River Song and could only stomach 15 minutes of that Doctor Mysterio shit. He could be awful, he could be fun and interesting. You see? Despite my growing reputation as a miserable bastard hater I still have reserves of fanboy optimism within me. I want to like New Who, it's just that they've made it so shit in the last five years in particular that that really is easier said than done. Anyway, what else, do we know about Series 10? Sarah Dollard is back, which is good. So is Peter Harness and the guy that wrote that forest shit in series 10, which is less good. Jamie Matheson is back. So we can only hope this is the Matheson that wrote Flatline and the Mummy episode in series 8 rather than the one who wrote the girl who flatlined last year. Oh and for the first time a classic series writer is back in the form of Rona Munro, who wrote The Amazing Survival, the last story of the classic series back in 1989. Now that is interesting, though whether she'll be able to come up with anything as interesting again nearly three decades later, and especially under the current regime, very much remains to be seen. What else do we know? There's a linked three-parter apparently, and the Cybermen are back in the finale, including the Mundasian Cybermen, the reveal of which had fandom in a tizzy just a few short weeks ago. How much they will actually have to do in that story which also includes other versions including the awful current ones, remains to be seen, though the pathetic fan service blink and you'll miss it appearances of the old Daleks in their last couple of stories does not exactly bode well. Nor does the fact that fucking Missy is in it either, with the castrated master set for several appearances this upcoming season, a fact that drains my ridiculous optimism every time I think about it. On the plus side. No fucking Clara. Thank Christ, there is a god. Nor does there appear to be any confirmation of an appearance by the awful new unit crew, which resembles a women's only gym these days, or the Paternoster gang, despite one episode being set around that time, though apparently it's Edwardian London rather than Victorian. I just don't know. I'll watch, if only to provide you lot with my thoughts but while I'm still enough of a fanboy for it to be impossible not to have some degree of interest or optimism in a new series, the last five years have made that very difficult to sustain. The Stephen Moffat who gave us The Empty Child, Blink and Series 5 seems to have disappeared a long time ago in a galaxy far far away, and I'm far from convinced he can muster enough of his old self to make his final gasp as showrunner the grand farewell you'd hope. I guess we will start to find out in a few short weeks, and for now we can only wait and see.